Hey everybody, Wes with Fundamental Games, here to do another tabletop simulator game preview. So today I'm going to go through some components and aspects to the board game Robot Quest Arena. This is a game that's currently live on Kickstarter and has done quite well, but I think it's uh, wrapping up fairly soon. But I'm sure you'll be able to late pledge if you catch this video after the fact. Uh, so let's share a couple things about Robot Quest Arena. First thing, and I think I shared this in my other video, but I really do love the miniatures in this game. So we're going to take a look at these. The board game will be coming with four pre-painted miniatures. And so if you didn't see the close-ups well on the Kickstarter page, you can take a look here. Um, it's got some nice sharp colors. This is just a 3D rendering, obviously, but uh, I'm sure the minis will look just as good as these with the coloring. I like how they've got uh, four different colors right on this robot here. Um, the robot's names are Pug. This one is Strider. Uh, over here we have Crate. I think it's due to his shape. It's like a storage unit. And then the um, Pug is actually right here. It looks kind of like a Pug, hence the name. It looks like a dog robot. Pretty neat looking. So these uh, are kind of remind you of games like Amiibo for Nintendo or Skylanders. It's neat how you have these characters. And I believe on the Kickstarter page you can get more than just these four, but the base game comes with these four and the Tabletop Simulator game um, just includes this as a demo or to show. So really like those miniatures in the game and the character boards that come with it kind of represent the, the characters. Uh, so to speak. So Strider has a special ability allowing you to make a ranged attack using its laser eye. Uh, Pug allows you to spawn in special places, letting you jump right into the middle of combat. Strider lets you be a bit more aggressive. You gain extra victory points and cards. And then Crate uh, allows you to, what is it, plus two wrench costs one energy more to be pushed. So it's hard to push the crate around. He's heavy and bulky. And pushing other opponents around into walls causes damage which is part of the game. So there you have it. That's the first thing I like is these characters are great. The miniatures look great. The cards allow them to have uh, asymmetrical abilities. Second thing I like is that the game takes place on a battle arena. So each player, if you're playing a four player game, would be in the four corners. Might change a bit if you're playing less players. Uh, and the goal is to move around the arena pushing your opponents around and trying to hit them with cards that you're going to acquire, um, like a rivet gun can deal damage or a heavy hammer can deal damage, for example. So you're trying to do damage to your opponents inside this big arena, uh, navigating your way and trying to time things out in your favor. So I like it's, a, it's an arena, kind of miniature skirmish game, uh, lightweight, cartoonish, but there's definitely some strategy in behind that. And most of the strategy falls in point number three, I love deck builders, and this is a deck building game. So you can see here you start with these ten cards in your hand, seven batteries, a jump jet, and a hammer. So batteries are basically your currency, they allow you to purchase new cards, jump jets are for movement, hammer is your one attack at the beginning of the game, but then you're going to be purchasing other cards that will give you the ability to buy more expensive cards if you buy more battery power, uh, damage, you can see some of the cards are a bit more expensive, like an electrified plating costs five battery. The only way you'd be able to buy that is if you had five batteries in your opening hand or you draw um, and pay for other cards that give you more batteries in single purchases. So you might amp up your deck to have more cards before you start going on the aggressive to start hurting opponents. Um, regardless, you're always going to have to hurt your opponents if you want any chance of winning this game just because this is a uh, player versus player direct attack game. I mean, that's the whole purpose of it. Um, none of the cards are extremely expensive. A Tesla coil, a bit pricey, but most of the cards are between three to five, I believe. So again, light deck builder. Each player starts with a, a generalized deck, but then they can build onto it, cycle through their cards, allowing them to navigate the board easier, do special maneuvers, or hit just a little bit harder. Fourth thing I like is the special tiles in the game. So the game starts with an assortment of tiles that you can put on here. You can use specific ones by choice or you can randomize it and put them on um, just wherever you wish. And the tiles do some neat things. So let's just take a look through here. Uh, we've got here the remote terminal. If you start your turn on that tile, you get to draw and then discard a card. So you almost kind of get to do a loot action, cycle a card. A repair pad, you can gain a health and a victory point just by starting your turn on that tile. Solar Farm allows you to gain energy. The Scrap Heap can call cards out of your deck that you might not want anymore. Like if you have too many of those one 
battery power cards might hinder you later in the game. Uh, wall can block movement and line of sight. Tax, you can push someone on there to take damage. Uh, so it's just neat that they've got not only the deck of cards, but you also have these tiles that could be on the board and they will change the some aspects of play. Or you may have cards that lay tiles too. I'm not familiar with all the cards in the deck yet. That's kind of neat. Some of the different things that can happen right on the battlefield or the board. Um, and then the fifth thing I like is the victory condition. So the victory condition of the game absolutely forces you to battle one another. There's no way you can win this game just by hiding in a corner and building up your deck. That will not do it because you get points by doing damage to your opponent. So if I happen to be uh, faced off against Crate and this guy lays a heavy hammer onto him, it deals two damage. Um, super heavy and has a neat thruster. So dealing two damage to Crate, the Strider would be able to take two red cubes off of Crate and they go kind of into their victory pile. So now those are worth one point each at the end of the game. If they do enough damage to take the last one away, so let's say the crate is down to his last health, which is a blue, they would take that blue health and that's worth two points at the end of the game. So you get extra points for being the first one to knock somebody out. Now that player is not out of the game. What will happen is they will acquire a reboost to all of their health. They'll get back um, their health cubes and then they'll be back in the game again and then they've got to get knocked out again. Um, so even though there's kind of an aspect of player elimination, meaning that you can knock them out, they're never truly gone. They're going to come back and fight some more. So you may uh, knock somebody out and create an enemy for the rest of the game. So that's a neat little twist on things. Um, as opposed to most deck building games where you're just playing with your deck and kind of doing your own thing and occasionally um, hurting one another. In this game, it is direct attack. Um, you're just going mono a mono. Uh, trying to take people out and sometimes you may end up ganging up on people. You may have a um, pug and crate bash up on Strider and knock them out but then Strider may come back and, and try to pick on one of the other two. So there's a bit of uh, um, understanding that uh, there will be times we'll get hammered on from both sides or from all around. It's just the way player versus player games can turn out. But there you have it, uh, Robot Quest Arena. Really cute graphics, really cool minis, a fun deck builder. This is by the creator of Star Realms, which have created some fantastic uh, expansions to that game and really uh, a clever deck builder. So if, if a company knows deck builders, it certainly is the creators of Star Realms and they've been able to apply deck building to this board game that's fun and, and lighthearted, but also uh, a little um, aggressive at the same time. Uh, if you've backed this and, and want to share your thoughts on it, by all means, put something in the comments. If there's something you like about the preview that I just showed you, absolutely let me know. And thank you, as always, for watching. Have a great day.